Hello, today I'm going to show you how I put together a pair of pants for my kids. I'm using the Movie Night Pajamas pattern from Sew A Little Seam. This is a free pattern if you're part of their Facebook group, so I will post the link down below and you can check it out. It's one of my favorite patterns. I've used it so often. I think all, almost all of the pants I've made for my kids are using this pattern. Okay, so here we have the pattern pieces for the Movie Night Pajamas. Uh, the pants and the pant cuff. I'm going to put my right sides together and line up all of my edges so that I'm ready to do the sewing. So get the edges lined up. You can use pins to do this. I like to use hair clips. So the first stitching that we do on these pants is you want to do the crotch seams. So you have the front and the back and you're going to want to use a stretch stitch. I like doing a triple uh, straight stitch. It's, it's my machine's straight stretch stitch and it's a little bit more sturdy than the zigzag stitch. And so I will do that stitch all the way down here and then I'll do this side all the way down. the cuffs, you will want to do the same where you find the right side of the fabric and then you will fold it in half. So get those both folded so that the right sides are together and on both of these you will do a stitch, a nice straight stitch along the side. And now that we have those stitches sewn, <laughs> you would have had your stretch stitch down the back crotch seam and the front and then on each of your cuffs on the side we get to do the next part so this is going to be the leg inseam so you're going to fold your pieces together you're going to match the inside of those seams together to line up the front and back um, and then pull them down so the legs match up now the part that match makes the most difference when you match is right at the crotch, um, at the bottom of the crotch seam where you want to line these seams up as perfectly as you can and pin them because that way when, you, when you're finished sewing all your seams will intersect perfectly um, in a cross and it just looks very nice and tidy. Now it's in a spot no one's ever going to necessarily notice that. You're going to be the only one as the maker of the garment who really looks at that and goes, oh wow, look at that, I did it perfectly. But it's good practice for um, other garments that eventually you may sew that have exposed um, intersecting seam lines. And so might as well learn how to be uh, a little more careful with your seams now so that in the future you already know how to do it and it comes a little bit easier. So now I have those seams all lined up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that same stretch stitch and I'm going to start at one end and go all the way up right across the top and all the way down the other side. The cuffs, so they've got their nice stretch stitch there, it's a little bit of stretch to it. We're going to turn, we're going to fold it in half um, so that the wrong side of the fabric where the seam, where the open seam is, is all encased on the inside. So I like to do this by first starting with the seam and matching it up just again so everything's nice and symmetrical. Then you fold it all the way around and kind of try to match up the raw edges of the fabric so they're all at the same level. Okay, so now we have the pants all sewn. All your seams should be showing on the inside of the garment, which is currently on the outside. We went all the way up and across and down. So now we want to turn it right side out. There we go. Now let's see how we did in that crotch seam. Oh, I had a little bit of a um, mess up with the machine, tried to eat the fabric for a moment there, so I have a little bit of a pucker there. But if you ignore that spot um, and look down here, we're we're really close to being straight across. There's almost, I don't know, it's like half a millimeter, maybe a full millimeter. Um, 
but it, it's pretty close to going straight, so that's good practice. Eventually I'll get it perfect every time. So now for the cuffs, we have them folded with the right side out on your pant leg. You're going to want to match up the seam line and put the cuff around the outside of your pant leg. And then match up that seam, grab your clip, and put it together, and then match up the raw edges of the cuff and the pant leg. Now, there's going to be a little bit of a size discrepancy between the two, so um, you can either mark it out and mark both of them at equal um, distance spots, usually like at the quarters, um, or you can be lazy like I am and just kind of eyeball it, stretch it to fit so that the fabric is equally stretched all the way around. So we're going to do a zigzag stitch all the way around the inside of this. Okay, so now we're on the last step, which is doing the waistband. For this, you're going to need your uh, length of elastic, which will be measured according to either the chart provided with the pattern or measure around your child's waist um, and make the elastic just a little bit snug around their waist so that it actually um, holds. If it's, if it's loose, then you're going to have saggy pants and the elastic won't be doing anything. So you want there to be a little bit of tension on the on the elastic when it's stretched around the waist. And so you could you can just measure it that way also. Uh, what I'm going to do is start by sewing my elastic in a circle. And so I'll just go forward and backwards on my two ends to connect them. You do want to make sure that you don't have any twists in the elastic so it lays flat around the hips. Um, and then I will also do a first hem around the waist. I'll fold it down just a little bit by probably like half an inch and do a zigzag stitch all the way around. Now if you want to put a tag at the back of the pants, this is a good time to get ready to do that. I like to use an orange piece of stretch fabric cut in a long rectangle and fold it over. It makes a uh, nice little tag and it's a very obvious because of the bright color. And so what I'll do is I'll just tuck it where I'm going to sew the seam, right up against that back center line. And when I fold it over, it'll just get sewn right in with everything else. And every time you open up the pants, the tag will be there. You want to be very careful that you're not catching the elastic in your uh, stitch line. What I like to do is take the edge of my, the raw edge of the fabric that you folded over once, and I put that right on, as I'm folding it, I put that right on the edge of the elastic. And that lets me know that when I see these stitches on the top, uh, my elastic comes right up to the edge of that stitching. And so that's my, my danger zone, is I don't want to stray onto this section of the fabric, because that's where my elastic is, but all of this space I'm free to put under the needle. As you go around, your elastic is most likely going to be shorter than the circumference of the pants, which is good. That, that means the elastic will actually um, snug up the waistband and hold it close to your child's waist. But as you're sewing it, you'll find yourself running out of elastic and so if you bunch up the back portion of it um, that gives you more exposed elastic to make your way all the way around. Okay so we have the pants finished now. We've just finished the waistband and um, you can see your tag there at the back uh, and then you can use if your waistband if you were successful in not catching it in any of your stitches then you should be able to kind of just move the gathers around the waistband so that they're kind of even even around it. Stretch it out, make it look even. And there you go. You've got a nice set of pants for your child with little cuffs at the bottom and a nice elastic waistband so they'll be comfy and stay put without a belt. And they're, they're looking pretty good and they didn't take you very long at all. Um, nice and quick. So there you have it. That's how I put together the movie night pajamas. And I hope this inspires you to maybe give it a try and um, just help you along with doing some new projects and realizing that maybe some of those projects that you think are going to be really challenging or hard actually aren't. I used to think that making pants was probably going to be one of the most difficult things 
um, I could imagine. But here, here I am making making pants, and just you know, it takes twenty minutes, maybe thirty minutes. Uh, once you've once you've done it a couple times and kind of get the flow of things, so you don't have to look back at the instructions. But it's a it's an easy, quick project, and it feels really good to accomplish something like that, where you now have a usable pair of pants that uh, you can see your kids run around in, play in the dirt, throw them in the wash, and and they stick together. <laughs> That's always my big fear when I when I sew something is that I'm going to throw it in the wash and it's all going to disintegrate. All of the stitches are going to fall out. But I haven't had that happen yet. So, um, yeah, it, it's nice to see your project kind of live up to all the wear and tear of life and know that you made something that's lasting and, and beneficial. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little kind of how-to. Um, there are other uh, tutorials out there too, so um, feel free to you know look around, find, find other people who you know, can teach you different things and um, this is just how I do it so I'm sure there are techniques um, that I've uh, not done perfectly and there are definitely multiple techniques to do things and people you know find something that works for them so sometimes watching multiple different people doing the same thing you'll fit you'll find something that works best for you but I hope I hope regardless that you're inspired and um, that you feel a little more able to do do crafts and hobbies and um and make things so have a good week i'll see you next time <laughs>